Hi, and welcome to Publishing Power. My name is Joellen, and today we have with us Christine Closer. Welcome, Christine. Thank you so much, Joellen. I'm super excited to be here with you and everyone listening and watching. Yeah, me too. This is awesome. Today, um, Christine is here to talk to us. She trains entrepreneurs and leaders to write their transformational books. She's a USA Today and Wall Street Journal bestselling author, coach, and publisher, which gives her a lot of insight to all of our authors who have questions. Since 2004, Christine's helped nearly 80,000 aspiring authors in 127 countries, and that is super impressive. Many clients have become bestsellers, while others have signed publishing deals, spoken on stages worldwide, and appeared in major media outlets like CBS, CNN, ABC, New York Times, TEDx, and more. And what's more important is who they become through her life-changing process. Christine delivers much more than a published book. She helps aspiring authors to fully embody their true, authentic self and bring their brilliance to the world. So it's like getting your message out there. You're a transformational author coach and you also are the founder of My Time to Write. So thank you for coming to talk with us today, Christine. This is so fun. Thank you, I'm excited to be here. Fire yeah. more questions at me, let's do this. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, my first question is I wanna know because of your background and the people that you've helped, what are some of the most important things to consider before writing your book? If we back oh, well. <laughs> One of the biggest things I always tell people who come to me for help is like, don't start writing first. Like <laughs> for, I mean, you wouldn't build a house without a foundation. So you don't want to write your book without a foundation. You want to make sure that you're, that you know what you're writing, who you're writing it for, you know, how you want to get them from point A to point B. Cause too many authors that just start writing, they end up like, at some destination that really wasn't the destination that they wanted to be at, nor that they wanted their readers to be at. So it's essential that before you start writing, you really do some deeper dive questioning as to the whole container and context um, through which and in which this book will come to life. Right. And uh, what do you think are the most essential areas to focus on when they're doing this? Well, I actually wrote a book about this called The Transformation Quadrant. I'm sure I probably have a copy up there somewhere. But it's a tool that I developed that has people look at the four, what I believe are the most essential and key areas to focus on when you look at writing this book, especially the people I work with, most of them are message-based business owners. So they're people who are coaches, consultants, entrepreneurs, business leaders in some capacity with a message to share. But what I always tell them is the first area you want to look at, like think of it like a four, you know, like a table with four legs. Mm -hmm. The first leg you want to look at in building that foundation is you personally. Like what is the big transformation? Because I do book writing as a transformational process. So it changes you as you birth this book and as you write this book. So first and foremost, what is the transformation that you want for yourself? as a result of going through this process to write the book, because I tell you, I mean, I've been teaching this four pronged tool, this transformation quadrant since 2011. And uh, I have seen so many people experience profound changes in who they knew themselves to be in the world because they looked at that aspect first. Um, so that's the first place to look. The second thing to take a look at is what is the transformation that you want for your readers? Right. I can't tell you, like, I'm always surprised when I talk to an author who's like, oh, I really need to be focused on my reader. It's like, well, what? yes. <laughs> Why are you writing this book if not for your readers? Mm -hmm. So like, what is the true transformation that you want for them? And when you dig in deep enough to that question, you'll really get a sense of, oh, you know, really rigorous clarity around who you're writing for, why, and what that transformation is you want for them. That, of course, then informs the content, you know, that goes between, you know, the introduction and the end. So that's the second leg that you want to take a look at. And the third piece of the quadrant is what is the transformation that you want for your business? Um, like I said, most of my clients are message-based business owners. They're here because they want to share something. You know, some don't care if they ever get to six figures, you know, others have sailed past seven figures in their business. Mm -hmm. But when you write a book, if it's connected to your business at all, you've got to be really clear for yourself. How do I want this book to transform my business? Because it can, does you want it? Do you want to help you get more speaking engagements? Do you want it to have your phone ringing with potential clients? Do you want to just, you know, get people onto a mailing list? Do you want to get them into an online course that you're offering? What is the big change? 
that you want and the transformation that you want in the business as a result of writing the book. Right. And then the fourth leg to look at, the fourth piece of this quadrant is what is the transformation that you really yearn for in the world? Like if all the people who needed your book, read your book, embodied your book, like lived the message in your book, what then might be possible for our world? It just helps you connect with, okay, yeah, I'm reaching the individual, but uh, if you believe in that ripple effect, mm -hmm. you know, the butterfly effect, the butterfly flaps its wings here and there's a breeze that blows on the other side of the world, you writing this book does have impact on a large level. And what do you want that to be? What's the transformation that you want from your book as that you know, pebble that drops in the pond and spreads ripples of your wisdom, your knowledge, what you're sharing in your book. So those are the four areas of self, the reader, the business, and the world to help you get that four-legged foundation built solidly before you start writing. Fantastic. And it is. That's a very high-level perspective to take with our with our writing and to connect ourselves even deeper to what we're doing. It gives us purpose. And I think purpose is very important when we're writing this book. So very good. What kind of tools do you recommend when you're outlining your book? Because you know, this is a big task and we're really backing up here way before. So what kind of tools can we use to prepare for all this? Well, there are a couple of different methods and tools that I teach. I have a lot of my clients love using the index card method, mm -hmm. which is just, you know, putting one idea per index card. These, this might be for like the ones that are, you know, closer to my age and older who aren't, you know, mind mapping all over their computer, you know, using software. Um, but when I write, I still, one idea on an index card, spread them all out and then figure out, you know, how they go together, what order. And then I take the, I instruct my clients and I myself will take all those index cards, you know, as they're formulated into chapters and then orders of chapters and then load that information into a spreadsheet and then right. really work from the spreadsheet. But I love this process of sitting down and kind of accessing all these ideas that I want to put into my book and just, I like the hand on paper for me personally. I have other clients who will mind map on paper and mm -hmm. other clients yet who, you know, they're into the technology. Um, right. Some of my younger ones are like, oh, I'm going to use, you know, whatever the mind mapping software is that they enjoy um, mm -hmm. to outline their book. So the important thing I think is to understand that there's not one right way to outline your book. There mm -hmm. are, you know, you can use the index card method. You could do um, you can do a mind map. You can, you know, you can, some people just create it just by writing it out in sort of outline form, you know, using the, out, the outline structure that's available in their word processing system. Um, and they will outline their book like that. But um, the important thing is to find a way that works for you. But those are some possible tools and ideas that might help you get going with that outline. Exactly. And, and you know, paper and pen and all that, that another stimulation of another sensory, it really does help uh, open up creativity. They've proven that again and again. So yes, just technology is not enough, you know, but talking about it is important. Reading it aloud, moving it around with your hands. I mean, that allows us to dig deeper into the, the areas that we sometimes ignore in today's world, especially as we're online so much. So yes. what kind of uh, pitfalls do you think that an author might avoid? I mean, you've got a lot of experience here and you've seen a lot of authors go through the process. Is there anything that, you know, would be a fantastic way for us to just save time or money or stress? Um, one of the biggest pitfalls that I see happens between the ears with authors is, you know, because I have them go out to the bookstore and do field trips and do certain types of research and like they're split in half pretty much. Some of them come back saying, oh my gosh, that was the most amazing thing. Like I got such crystal clarity. Like, thank you. I'm so inspired by what I you know, did on my field trip to the bookstore. And then there will be some who will come back and be like, there's so many books already written on this topic. You know, what do I have to say? So I think the biggest pitfall that you can fall into is letting any of those voices of fear, doubt, worry, what are, gonna, what are people going to think of me? Who am I? Right? Because writing a book is a somewhat vulnerable process. Like it's out there for people to judge. And if it's on Amazon, people can judge it with, you know, one star instead of the five and four, four stars that we all want to get. But you have to believe in what you're doing enough, which is why I always look at the start with that quadrant. Because when you get clear on the transformations that you want, it will help you weather some of those moments of, you know, doubt and, you know, confusion and things that are just at play to keep you safe mm -hmm. instead of keep you expanded. So, you know, just watch your mindset as you're writing. 
And the other pitfall that I want you to avoid is, I don't know if you've seen this in your work, Joellen, but I have seen people who like, they pour their heart out on the pages mm -hmm. and then they want to show it to the very person who they most want approval from, but who is least capable of right. approving of them. So I have seen people write like, oh, I shared it with my sister. It's like, well, you know, is your sister your ideal reader? Is your, system, is your sister someone who supports what you're up to in the world? Well, right. No, but like, I really wanted her to, you know, <laughs> to kind of give it a stamp of approval. Don't, don't do that pitfall. Right. If you want to share your work, share it with someone who loves you, cares about you, who will be honest with you as well. You don't just want them to be like, oh, it's great. If they really feel like, oh, you know, this kind of didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. um, so don't make the pitfall of sharing it with the wrong person too soon. And chances are, if you're going to do that, you're going to want to do it with the one person that you, you do most want that from. Right. Um, so don't avoid that pitfall. And please don't edit while you write. No. Let the creative flow come. Because once you tap in and those words start pouring on the page, if you're like, oh, you know, is that comment in the right place? Or did I spell that word correctly? You're, you're like telling that flow that's coming to you mm -hmm. and coming through you to stop because you're more concerned about a comma. No, okay. let the message come out. Let it be messy. Let it be your sloppy copy as it first comes out. Because that's mm -hmm. not the version that's going to get published. No. So let it flow. Those are just a few. I could go on, but oh no, you're enough. <laughs> you're talking to the choir here. As editors, we yeah. know we know definitely. You know, be free and do what you like, and you know, come to a professional who is neutral and can help you. And you know, or or somebody, your peer readers and your beta readers, they will all come, but not not at the first step. That's not the first step. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I know that you coach a lot of people through this. So how does a coach work for people? Because that's still a new concept for some. And, you know, why would I pay somebody else to, to do this? So tell us a little bit about the benefit. There. Well, it's kind of like doing anything. If you haven't done it yet, you don't really know what works. You don't really know what to look out for. You don't, might not even know what, like I have people come like, well, I just don't know what to do or the order to do it. Like, what do I do first? Mm -hmm. So I always feel like working with a coach just kind of shortens um, the time it takes to get there. Can you get there on your own? Yeah, but you might end up like I did. I mean, the first time I ever wrote my first book that was like my solo book came out in 2008. Like I wrote, I wrote a great book. I mean, we sold thousands of copies. It got Neil Donna Walsh to write the foreword for it. And it's a fantastic book. However, it wasn't the right book for me at that time. And it like literally everything, my business, everything ended up crumbling um, oh. within two years of that book being written. But I didn't know, like I wasn't working with someone who dug deep enough to, to help me determine if that was indeed the right book. So a coach can really just shorten the learning curve. You know, it might be an investment up front to work with a coach or, you know, follow a, a coach's system. Mm -hmm. um, but man, in the long run, you're going to be saving money because you're going to avoid the pitfalls. It's going to happen faster. Right. And hopefully if you work with the right coach, because not everyone is the right coach, hopefully, you know, you'll end up with the right book. Because mm -hmm. I, I mean, I have had clients and we might've talked about this earlier, Joellen, um, I have had people come to me after spending $15,000 with other coaches mm -hmm. who, who coached them to literally write a book that they didn't even want to write, that they got like from the publisher and just kind of didn't even want to tell people about it. Like it's born to tuck it behind them because it just, it wasn't, it didn't represent them. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you're going to work with a coach that cares more about you um, than their own pocketbooks. And they're going to really be focused on helping you excavate the right book, which mm -hmm. as you might imagine from my early experience, like I'm on a mission to make sure that people <laughs> get coached to write the right book for them. It's too much work to do with, you know, the wrong one or write mm -hmm. about a topic that you're really not even interested in. And some people are being coached to do that. It's kind of sad, but Oh, yeah. So make wow. sure you find the right coach. <laughs> exactly. Um, and they can shorten the curve for sure if they're the right one. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. So the, the writers are facing a lot of challenges. What do you think are some of those that they need to be aware of and that a coach and that can help them through and planning? I find that one of the biggest challenges that people face is the, the clarity 
that they have mm -hmm. and then don't remember that they have. So a good coach will return someone because they'll go through the process. Someone will say something, they'll see an article, you know, something interesting will happen in the world, like whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden they doubt what they really are crystal clear on. So I do a lot of work returning people, you know, like going out there and fetching them from, you know, the abyss of their mind or, you know, this confusion they think they, they think they have. And I'll be like, okay, let's come back. Like, where are you now? What do you want for your readers? What, like, they just need to come back to ground and come back to center and come back to that clarity. Because if they don't have that kind of, um, reflector and a place to know that you'll be drawn back to that you know true authentic message that you're here to share mm -hmm. um that that can that can get pretty hairy for authors just just writing and writing and writing but kind of going in too many different directions and not to the essence of what it is that they want to do with their book right Right. I mean, this is a good time in life to reflect. I, I feel like the world is in a place for that also. So making sure that you're living the values, the uh, purpose driven and, and defining that not only in your writing, but in your life. I mean, now is the time we have the opportunity to step inside a little bit and uh, take that creativity and find it out. So that's really a very valid, valid concern there. So what is one thing that you would recommend for all authors to get started today? Well, if you haven't done this yet, it's kind of a fun exercise. And this really works mostly for nonfiction. That's my, that's where I, the space I work in mm -hmm. is if you haven't yet written the 250 most important words for your book, which are the words on your back cover, I would encourage you to do that exercise mm -hmm. because if you cannot put your message clearly and concisely into like 250 words, you might not yet be as clear as you need to be on what this book is about to be able to write it. So it's a, it's a really fun exercise. I mean, it can, some people get tripped up in their head about it. It's like, oh, it has to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's right. not going to be the exact, you know, words that go in your back cover copy, but what would you want that to say? And then you're, then it makes writing the book easier because you're just fulfilling on the promise that you made of what your reader will receive if they actually go through and read the entire book. So if you haven't done that fun exercise yet, you know, a headline, some descriptive paragraphs, a few bullet points. Um, and it's just, it's a great way to congeal and really make your message um, and your mission with this book concise and clear for you and eventually for your readers. So that, that's a fun exercise. Again, fiction is a whole different story because sometimes your characters will take over and you, know, you don't even know where the whole book is going. Um, but for nonfiction writers, uh, I would recommend that exercise. Oh, that's brilliant. It really is. That's brilliant. That's a little golden nugget for us today to walk away from it all. I think yeah, challenge yourself. And, and, and also, I think that it comes down to, you know, in that same sense, what do you want your uh, description of the author to be? What are you going to achieve? And if you write that, you're really getting that vision clear. You know, are you a best-selling author or, you know, is it something more personal? Is it something you're the leading expert in something. That's fantastic. So much. Okay. Well, great. Uh, Christine, where can we find out more information? Where should we, because obviously, you know, 80,000 authors experience is 100% where we want to be going. We, there are too many gurus out there that we're just tired of connecting with. That's why we have publishing power. We only want to talk to those who have proven success records and can show us where to go. So how do we get more information about you? Well, one of the best things to do is actually go get a copy of my book for free. Um, and there's a workbook that goes along with it. You can just go to transformationquadrant.com. It's just transformationquadrant.com and grab the free copy, download the workbook, print it out. Um, and I would really encourage you to really you know, do that exercise. So that's step one. And then you can also just go to my website. My main website is christinecloser.com. Or if you're like, oh my gosh, I need her help right away, then go to getyourbookdone.com where you'll learn more about my course that I've been teaching for 13 years and get access to coaching from me and my coaching team um, for the next six months to help you write your manuscript so that Joellen can then edit it. Edit it. <laughs> um, so yeah, get your book done, transformationquadrant.com. Uh, Again, both .coms so are just my main website at christineclosure.com. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing this today. And again, I encourage everyone to go out and write that 250 most important words on about your book. I love that 250 most important words, not just words, 
most important words. And uh, commit to yourself. And again, get the training and the coaching that you need. Thank you so much for joining us today, Christine. It was brilliant talking with you. Thanks for having me.